Hey, what's the crack and welcome to or back to the channel. As you've probably already heard by now, DaVinci Resolve 18 public beta was released very recently and with it, as per usual, came a whole bunch of new features. Now, yesterday I did a quick first look video at the Surface Tracker, so if you want to check that out, there's a card above and a link below. But today we're looking at this new depth map tool. As someone who does often a lot of either relighting in post-production or correcting mixed color temperatures, this is genuinely going to change the way that I grade. Please keep in mind that this is not a comprehensive tutorial, it is simply a first look video. So what this tool does is it allows you to generate a mat based on depth and from there then you can color grade just that region of the image. In this first example, I'm going to use this tool to darken the background to help our subject stand out. So the first thing I learned with this tool is similar to the surface tracker. At this point in time, I would recommend that you add it to your node tree by dragging it directly on there. And that way you'll get all the input options available. If you add a new node and then drag the tool onto the node, you won't get all of those input options. So at this point, I believe DaVinci is in full autopilot mode and taking an educated guess at isolating background and foreground. And basically, as with any mat, white regions is what we will be able to grade and black regions is what will be ignored. Right away, I will change the quality over to faster for just better performance. And if you want to invert the mat so that it's the background and not the foreground that you will be affecting, you can just click on invert. I'm gonna leave it as default. Now let's refine this adjustment. And if you're used to refining mats in any way, whether that's with using the Delta keyer or doing qualifiers or anything like that, I think this all comes quite intuitively. Where I like to start is by enabling isolation and playing with the target depth setting and take manual control of the depth. Then the tolerance to me behaves almost like a depth of field. So we can kind of widen or more narrow the target depth itself. And then we can soften that tolerance as well. Then I like to come back up to resulting map adjustment and play with the fire limit and near limit. And you can see the fire limit better cuts out the background, any of that that might be seeping in by accident. And then if that's starting to bite into our foreground too much, we can pull back on near limit and you can just play around with those, including gamma, which seems to shift between the two settings and just find a nice balance. And then we can finally come down to map finesse. Now my advice is get this looking reasonable and don't overthink it. What I prefer to do is then go and make my actual color adjustments and see when I've pushed my image where I want it, is the mat holding up? And then I will come back and do some final adjustments. Now this depth map node only generates a mat for us to use. To actually use that properly, we need to add a new serial node and then take the mat output from the depth map node and plug that into the mat input of the new serial node. Now on this node, I can make adjustments to just the foreground, which in this case is our interview subject. Now I'm going to take this one step further and I'm going to add a layer node and then I'm going to connect up the mat from the depth map into this new node as well. Then on the bottom node, I'm going to invert the mat. Now the bottom layer will adjust the background and the top layer will adjust the foreground. Now that step technically isn't necessary, but if I make a change to the background and then later on disable the foreground, the background layer correction would still stand true. Now on the background layer, I can come in and use the offset wheel to slightly darken the background, which will pull out our subject from it. And then on the foreground layer, I can do whatever I want. In this case, just for the sake of this video, I'll do a slight increase to contrast and saturation. It is at this point that you have your final color adjustments made that if needed, you can come back to the depth map and make any refinement adjustments to make sure that everything is blending together seamlessly. In this second example, the foreground and the background were lit with two separate light sources. And as a result, the foreground and my skin tones look nice and natural, but the background has quite an aggressive green cast to it. 
So I'm gonna use depth map to isolate foreground and background and make a color adjustment to background to neutralize that green cast. So we'll throw the depth map node on and I will play the slider dance until I have a separation that I am happy with. And then I can just invert that mask and make sure it's adjusting the background and not the foreground. And I can make that green cast adjustment by adding magenta and a tiny bit of coolness. And now we have a nice neutral looking image. So there you have it, some uses for this new depth map tool in the color page of DaVinci Resolve. I'm personally very happy about this and can see myself integrating this heavily into my workflow, but let me know what you think of it in the comments below and how you intend on using it. And if you found this video helpful, please do consider giving the video a thumbs up as well as subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell so that you can see more content just like this. Have a good one and I'll see you in the next video. We came to fight